Welcome back here to Fillet Field as we get ready for the third place playoff in this tournament. Joined us just in time for the national anthems. These two teams, Indonesia and New Zealand, both will be disappointed to be playing in this game. Of course, nine o'clock in the morning. Battling Auckland rush hour traffic to get here. They would have rather have been playing in the two o'clock game this afternoon, the championship game. But things didn't go their way yesterday. Indonesia are a tough battle against the Korean team. New Zealand, it's been a tough tournament for them and they were outplayed from the from the jump by the Guam team that been playing with a lot of confidence this tournament. We see here plate meeting with the managers, umpire crew, just making sure both teams are, are ready for this. And after that, of course, we'll move in to the traditional New Zealand haka, laying down a challenge to the Indonesian team. Challenge it, of course. They were more than up to in their pool game, storming back late, coming up with their only win so far of the tournament. This New Zealand team, things have not gone their way. Yet to record a win, and coaches will be determined as they move into this final opportunity. Home tournament. team facing the challenge down by the New Zealand team. We see as is customary, they will not be the first to move, waiting for the Indonesian team to take their place back in their dugout, the New Zealand team standing them down. However, of course, Indonesia they won't back down from a challenge, they look around now. A few nerves, obviously. Not quite sure what that jangling of keys was. New Zealand team steering down their players moment this umpiring crew will soon move in call the teams back to their dugouts Here's umpire Keiji just letting them know New Zealand the New Zealand team now back away that challenge was laid down Beautiful to watch these two teams. Great spirit between these teams. Great spirit between all the teams here. Of course, that is a mark of little league play. Go, 
rustling of keys in the background is Mike Kovic. He'll be uh, perhaps joining us on and off during this game, of course. He's going to be looking on expectantly. As we said, this is the Well, here we go, Indonesian team playing down their own little challenge. Yes, as we said, this is the third place playoff. Not a place either team wanted to be, but you've got to play the cards you doubt. Indonesia, of course, losing a thriller, really, to Korea. They kept the pressure on the whole time during that game. <laughs> We'll just ask uh, Mike Kovic just to move himself outside the uh, ropes here. He's having a few conversations in the background. Mike, of course, picks that up at all times. If he's going to join us, he'll be off to get himself a chair. The chair might actually be in place. Oh, the chair is in play. Look at that. NRL, I don't know about that, though. So are you going to join us for this, Mike, or are you oh, going to be... Um, jump in there for a little bit and see how we... We go. I may have to leave a little early today. Just um, production manager there, just making sure this picture cam here was in place. We'll just give it a little minor adjustment as well. Look to try to give you a few shots here of the pitches, looking at their technique, something that uh, we noticed Super Coach Paul Wansbone very interested in yesterday. Be interesting to see how these teams approach this game. I would say, uh, Roy, they're probably both both going out for the win. To be fair, and I'd say they both want to start strong. Well, I think there's no doubt that this New Zealand team will be playing for a win. Of course, yet to get on board this season. And when we mention of yet to get on board, of course, great news yesterday as the Oakland Athletics picked up their first win of the new season. Of course representing them down here today just to celebrate their first win they might not get many it's a 162 game season of course the last two seasons more than 100 losses but i'm so, thinking my a's will come back strong and today i've come down uh representing the mighty central city renegades champions uh divisional two baseball team this year just um, waiting on our rings to turn up and well, we might lord the uh, divisional two. Of course, Central City. Have a number of players in this New Zealand team. I believe there's as many as six players from their team that competed in the Senior League National Tournament here in New Zealand. If you haven't noticed today, Roy, uh, no two cans of Red Bull today. Yeah, I'm not sure whether that gives me pause for concern or whether I'm quite relieved that you're not going to be quite so amped up for this game. You were definitely on edge early on yesterday, I Mike. can I can always surprise people, mate. A few super fans just walking in the background there. Mike really does bring the fans in with him. Sure do, Roy. And when we speak of super fans, of course, Aaron Trillo. He'll be on the couch again today, recovering. We wish him well. Aaron Trillo just saying how much he appreciates having Mike Kovic on the mic down here. He's a good man, uh, old Aaron. He did give Mike some big compliments. He said he's got a face for radio and a voice for TV. I assume that is big compliments for you there, Mike. I will take it, mate. I will <laughs> take it. Here for the baseball, Roy. Here for the baseball. Absolutely. We see here Coach Tidia Thompson looking in. He looks in good spirits today, despite this tournament not going the way that he would have hoped. About to have our lead-off batter, Corbin McKinley, come up to bat for the first pitch of the game. He'll be looking to get straight on bag, I'm, I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> nice 
nice pitch to start with with a cut foul back behind the home plate. We've seen this a bit from this New Zealand team, not traditional lead-off hitters. They'll tend to have a go early. Number nine on the mound for Indonesia once again. Just waiting for our production trailer, the computers to fire up so that we can pitch there. So we can give you some of these names. 70 mile an hour, this Indonesian pitcher. He's feeling good today. I hear uh, all the boys really enjoyed the traditional um, hangi feed last night uh, there, Roy. Yes, big thanks to uh, the godfather, Dom Topia. Is nice play there. Shortstop throwing out Corbin McKinley at first. Yes, Dom slaved away with his big group of volunteers. As always, big thank you to the volunteers down here. Right from the grounds crew up to our production manager, John Mackay. CEO of Baseball Productions here in Auckland. It's good to see him down at the ground helping us out. Well, it kind of helps when you don't have a job, guys. <laughs> Spoken like a man who knows what he's talking about there. From yeah, I was down at work COVID. at uh, quarter to six this morning getting all my prep done so I could be at the Baseball Diamond. So I see Shane Scanlon here, number two hitter for New Zealand. Big catcher. I think uh, I think yesterday in that semi-final, I think I think we saw just a little bit the effect of him catching that marathon five-hour game the day before. Hopefully, he's got his legs back under him today, and we see the best out of Shane. Off-speed pitch there, he fouls it away. Yeah, I must say it would be um, quite quite a tough tough ask for straight days long games like they have been in catching position that's got to take a bit of a toll on the old legs and body there you're not wrong about long games mike i think uh by the end of today we'll have over 30 hours of baseball here at this senior league qualifying series and was that uh what four games there roy <laughs> oh come on mike don't be like that of course we had six games in the round robin two semi-finals now we have the third place playoff here between New Zealand and Indonesia. That pitch up. Shane has got his eye in today. Yeah, reading, reading that one like a book. Couldn't quite make out the call there from uh, umpire Mike. I think it might be a full count here. Um, I believe we must be, if not, we must be close to. Just enjoying this coffee. I took my eyes off the game for a second there. And that's a strikeout. Oh. You see there, Shane, thought he knew his zone. The umpire says, it's not your zone, pal, it's my zone. And just starts up that chainsaw and rings him up. I have seen a little bit of that today where the boys walk off like they think it's a ball and getting called, struck out. A little bit too much of that from some teams, trying to influence the umpire's call. These experienced umpires here is... TJ Amosa steps into the box. That was a nice pitch down there with a bit of movement dropping in over the plate there. Absolutely, he's working about 70 mile an hour with his fastball. Dropped down to 60 there with that, I think, curveball. Might have been a slider, it's a little bit hard to tell. We've got TJ Amosa in the box now. He'll be looking to drive that one out there like he has been most of the tournament, to be fair. Big swing at a 69 mile an hour fastball and TJ behind Correct early. me if I'm wrong, Roy, but I'd say TJ's probably up there with hits for the, the team this this um, tournament there. Well, I do love it when you just step into the box and just throw made up facts around, Mike, but you might be you might be close, I'm not sure. I've seen a lot of good hitting from these players, so it'd be certainly a competition in that category. And we'll see a few superstars of the game later on. Short stops of each team. Uh, yeah, I must say, um, over the whole tournament that I've watched Roy, um, one of my standout players, again, we'll bring it up again, is Weekly from the, the Guam side. And wherever they put him, he just produces. Absolutely. Is that fastball 72 mile an hour just off the outside corner? Yeah. 
We have a piece out there by TJ Amosa right in between left field and centre field and he's going for two and he'll be a stand-up double. Great. great, great bit of batting there. Great hitting, TJ Amosa and that's what, that's what you're commenting on, you've seen it a lot. And there goes another one, Roy. We have Ayrton coming out to grab his uh, Bruce Bolts off him. I don't think he wears the Bruce Bolts, but they are certainly batting gloves. So, <laughs> my pick here, I guess, when you talk about weekly, I think that I think that whoever wins the final, their shortstop will end up being the MVP of the tournament, I think. Number one park for Korea has been outstanding, and, and you called it weekly has led this Guam team undefeated so far through the tournament. Captain Liam Hay into the box. Low pitch there for a ball. Get a look in here at Liam. Powerful player. Swings a big bat. So do we have uh, guru extraordinaire Samuel Eva coming for the final there today, Roy? Yes, I uh, did hear rumours. Cut back yep. foul there by Liam Hay. Heard rumours that the man, the myth, the legend, Samuel Lever, number one play-by-play -play commentator here in New Zealand, has accepted a contract to come down for the final. Give us a little bit of time off. Super fan Aaron Trillo just messaging there. He's excited about that. Oh, come on, Aaron. have a swing there at a high pitch there. You see the look there from Liam Hay, a little grimace, he knew that wasn't his pitch. Potentially Liam just thinking that he might have been getting that off speed, it's a nice looking off speed pitch that this pitch has got, but no it was a fast ball and straight past him up in the zone. Outside. Absolutely low and outside. Liam Hay known for his understanding of the strike zone. Typically doesn't chase pitches like he did earlier. He would have been disappointed with it as you saw from that grimace. He's got an opportunity. TJ Mosa in scoring position. Safe it here. Pops that one up. I think it's going to go foul. First, oh, good foul. attempt by the first baseman. First there baseman. Indonesia. I think we just lost that on the camera. We don't, we don't have quite as many cameras as we would like. 70 mile an hour fastball. Liam fouls it back. First baseman diving effort, but Liam stays alive. Still with this opportunity to give New Zealand the early lead. Of course, New Zealand in this game batting first. They're the away team by virtue of being the lower seeded team. Oh, high, high pitch there and swing, struck out. You see Liam walking off, a little bit dejected by that. Talked up his strike zone judgment and he's just gone flailing after that pitch up. I think he thought that there was gonna be a bit more movement on that curveball. it just stayed up above the zone. And here we see the New Zealand team taking the field. We'll look to get around their defensive alignment. Give you guys a bit of an understanding of who we've got on the diamond. Look over to Mike Kovic. Is he going to be the one that calls out the New Zealand players? He's He says, hang on, give me a second. I'm just taking my sweatshirt off. It's a beautiful day down here at Follett Field. So we have uh, Tangaroa King on the mound starting us off uh, pitching. We have uh, behind the plate there, Shane Scanlon. First base, we have Messiah Tuhoro. Second base, we have Hugo Harvey, if I'm correct there. Absolutely, Hugo played a lot of third, second base this tournament. Third base, TJ Amosa. We have Ben Bongiovanni in shortstop. Left field, we have, I'm a little blind. Looks Peter like Peter Yee out there, the big lefty. Good to see him. Centre field, field we have. I can't see because of the umpires. I think that's Corbin McKinley out there. Played a lot of shortstop this tournament. And right field, we've got Micah Hargraves, another one of these players go. that represented Central City Baseball Club. 
The 16U Championship, Micah was a bit of a superstar for the Central City team. Great to see him out there in right field. He swings a big bat. Of course, we see the adjustment. TJ Mosa coming into third base. Played centre field the last two games for New Zealand and probably gives you a bit of an idea that this team just hasn't had as much baseball as they would like. The coach is still... This late stage, still trying to find the perfect alignment. Corbin McKinley. I think that's a, a, a moved good out move to there, field. Um, having TJ come into third base there. I think he's, um, what I've seen when he has been on third base in this tournament, is he's been pretty sharp there. We've been getting, getting a lot of balls down that way too. Very solid third baseman. He did look good in centre field, potentially just looking for a little more speed out there. Corbin, a very speedy player. And gives Ben Bongiovanni opportunity to play shortstop. He'll appreciate that. Ben, superstar player for the local club. Hal Hawks. See here, Tangaroa King, final warm up pitch. <coughs> Indonesian batter coming into the box. Starting pitcher, leadoff batter. Whew. If this was a club game, you'd say he must be the coach's son. <laughs> but it's not a club game. This is international baseball at its finest. Third place in this tournament on the line. Tangara starts us off very close pitch, 71 mile an hour. Tangara, of course, one of the two players in the squad who travelled to the World Series and easily South Carolina last year. He'll be very disappointed not to get the opportunity to go back. Ball low there. So we have two balls on uh, Tangaroa King right now. Roy's looking for his hot cross buns. Uh, he must have misplaced them. Or maybe one John McKay has eaten them. McKay. Mike oh, McKay. It's not spout that way though, is it? It's not spout that way, but don't sucker me into getting it wrong again. Samuel Lever's already done that to me. 71 mile an hour, outside corner, Tangaroa King, looking good. Hear the Indonesian team singing in the dugout. I've got to say, it's team spirit. That has kept them strong in this tournament. It's team spirit that got them into a position where they actually had an opportunity to upset Korea in the semi-final yesterday. Powerhouse of Korea against a little engine that could Indonesia. And, and they I just came up short. They held their own for a lot of the game there, but uh, yeah, like, like Roy said, just coming up short there. Tangaroa King in the zone again. 72 mile an hour. Oh, King, first time through. Will he just lean heavily on that fastball? Certainly. Teams tend to sit on his fastball. He hasn't shown his off speed as much as I think he could. He worked very hard on curveball and a change up. Could be the time to use it now. Oh, that yes. Was a great pitch there by Tangaroa. Giving well, him the first out of the game for New Zealand. I don't like to say, told you so, but by gosh, I told you so, as Tangara King drops a curveball on 57 the mile an hour. Beautiful too. Gives umpire Mike a chance to just break out that chainsaw again. He's got no mercy on these batters. He says, <laughs> if you're just going to look at it, I'm going to show you up. So, better Trisnati, number 34 for Indonesia. Left hand better up to bat now. Tangaroa will be looking to do the, the same thing here and nice early couple of strikeouts. He's got to be careful here. We've seen good power from Trisnati. He's uh, ripped a few into right field. Strong, compact, left-handed bat. Hands quick to the ball. Will we see any burgers today there, Roy? Burgers getting given out. The notorious baseball burger. Of course, Mike there referring to the fact that a free burger, an 
an epic burger if you want is on the line for any player that hits a home run and we haven't seen one this tournament we've seen some big hits i think the morning games are the opportunity as the wind tends to get up in the afternoon usually blowing in from left field Tagara. That little curveball, Trisnati sits back on it, just goes the opposite way, and that's a single into left field. Bon Giovanni there, just shy of uh, grabbing that one, but uh, just enough out to get that spot for the single there. I don't think he ever really had a play on it. He, he made it closer than perhaps he should have. It was a good effort, but as you say, single into left field, and that might be a little bit of the difference that we've seen with the teams. New Zealand tend to swing for power a lot, whereas these other teams in the tournament, if the pitcher's there, they'll give it a rip, but otherwise, they're happy to just go with what the pitcher gives them, work the singles, get the pitcher in trouble, pile on some runs. King just keeping that runner on us. That's another thing that we've seen a lot of, Mike. We've seen runners in motion. Teams haven't been afraid to really put pressure on the catcher's arm. Yeah, there's been some very good base running in this tournament, I must admit, um, and very tactical base running as well, especially by uh, the Guam and Korean sides that I've noticed. Perhaps a reason there why those two teams are in the finalists. Tangaroa King really working into this outing now. 73 mile an hour. Of course, early in the tournament, we saw him up 75, 76. So he's got another little gear in there. Coach is just adjusting the centre fielder, just calling him in. Runner goes. Ball hit and out there. Out to centre. That is a big hit. That's dropped just shy of the fence there by about six metres and it's coming in. They're bringing one runner in here. He's held it two. But they bring in the first run of the game into Nisha Trisnadi coming around into home plate. That's a huge hit there. Unbelievable situation there as we saw the New Zealand coaches just calling Cole McKinley and they saw the approach didn't look to be for power. The batter sees him come in and he goes, thanks for that. And he just rips one out to left centre. Now, New Zealand is going to just be wanting to make sure of some of these plays now and get out of this one and uh, get back in the, in the batter's box and try and make something happen. It's, again, we've got a big hit out to right field. We've got Micah Hargraves coming over for it. And we have a catch there. Great play by Micah. That is two down now. Dangerous hitter there, Sompatan. Number eight. So we have Indonesia with a runner on two. We've got Dharma up to bat. So this is so exactly what Indonesia would have looked for. This New Zealand team yet to register a win. They'll have a bit of a feeling that if they can land a punch early, maybe this New Zealand team doesn't have to fight. What do you think, Mike? Well, I certainly... Ooh, oh, hit better there. Pitch. Not what Tangaroa King would be wanting right here, but... You think if Indonesia land an early punch, does this New Zealand team have it in them after a disappointing tournament to stay up, stay in the fight? Well, they've had the battle the whole tournament of being up and down, actually, in, in, in situations, and just coming short. We're hoping not to see that today, but at this stage we have one runner in, we're two down, we've got a runner on, one and two. Message Tangaroa, there. We're wanting to get out of this one quickly with this batter here. Message there from superfan Aaron Trillo saying that was a lot of words from Mike Kovic to not answer the question. Potentially he doesn't believe this New Zealand team has a fight in them. We'll wait and see. I believe they have the fight, but I believe uh, there's a lot of tired boys in this uh, team that, um, you know, some long games, long days. Absolutely. Outside the comfort zone with the, the living situation for the week and 
Um, yeah, I think I think we've got some some tired boys, but that goes for all the teams here. They've travelled from overseas and they've had to live in quarters they wouldn't be used to as well. So I mean, pitch up there, all the same. So interesting. There'll be tired bodies, but I think for this New Zealand team, it's it's really the tired minds. They came into this tournament with great hopes, having easily dispatched the Wellington team and the senior league qualifiers here in New Zealand. They thought they had it in them. And to then step out here and just see their dreams slowly slip away. Mike Kovic just giving me a little break, he said. He understands. It's a lot of pressure having to listen to that man. <laughs> As our CEO, John Mackay, just comments that I'm doing well, been able to put up with Mike for this long. You won't have to put up for him much longer as Samuel Eva will be here later on. Tangaroa King and that ball's lifted out there to centre field. Corbin McKinley coming in. Easy as you like. And that'll be the end of the first. Indonesia doing what they wanted. Getting on the board first. It's going to be fascinating now to watch how this New Zealand team responds. We'll go into the second innings. Indonesia still just bubbling away with confidence. New Zealand team looking to fight back. Seems to be the story of the tournament for this New Zealand team, having to fight back. I see we got out of that one there, Roy. Absolutely. Nice play there from Corbin McKinley, centre field. Indonesian pitcher though. Number nine. Bit of a superstar in the making this lad. So I'm sure all the boys are looking forward to uh, going back to school tomorrow. We see here coach Tidia Thompson looking on. Passing on some advice to the on-deck batter, Messiah Tohiro. One more warm-up pitch and then we'll be into the second innings. Messiah chomping at the bit to get in there. You see him there looking on. Like you were saying before, Roy, I think... Uh the tactic to take would be um, not trying to put it over the fence today and putting it putting it in, in the outfield, in the gaps and, and, and taking the single or, or doubles. Not looking for that big, big home run because we, we haven't seen one at all the whole tournament. Indeed, but if there's one guy that can put it over the fence, it's the home run derby winner, Messiah. I must say, most of the Guam and Korean boys um, with the bats have not been looking to put it over the fence. They've been looking to put it on the grass in spots and produce runs. And it seems to have worked over the tournament so far. Well, it's hard to argue with the results, Mike. Stats don't lie. No, they don't. And I would suggest that this pitcher does not one leave one over the heart of the plate because you can't deny Messiah's power. I'm sure they know that New Zealand's got that firepower on the bats and um, like you say, they're not going to be wanting to put one right in the meat of the, the plate there because these boys will take advantage of that. Outfield deep but not exceptionally deep. Outside pitch there for ball three. Oh, want that fourth one where they're been brought back into the box. Three balls, one strike. I think 
the side didn't realise it. He'd actually taken a huge swing at one of them. He's that amped up for this game. He puts Rips one that down one up the middle. middle. Wow. Shortstop gets it. And an out at one. So you saw there the ball just sat up perfectly for the Indonesian shortstop. Messiah, not the quickest player up the line. This is the thing about um, being on a grass dirt diamond there, Roy. Um, the bounce, when it's a ground ball in the infield, the ball can take many different paths off the, off the ground and that one popped up nicely to shortstop, perfectly to grab and make the play at one. I say that Messiah might not be the quickest up the line, but boy, this little gamer here, Hugo Harvey, he's got some speed on him. We have a ball higher for the first pitch on Harvey. And if he hit one up the middle the same, he'd be rounding first looking for two, he's that quick. New Zealand would have loved to see Hugo get on base. Big cut at that one. The infield had drifted in, looking at the size of Hugo, not realising that this boy possesses some real power. Dangerous game that the Indonesian outfield's playing. Inviting Hugo to put it over them. We could see an inside the park home run. Is there a burger on that one, Mike? There is no burger on that one, unfortunately. Oh, I'd like you to rethink that call. Like if Maybe a large fries. I think it would be worthy at least of... Might even chuck in some of the famous, notorious honey mustard sauce. I think it'd be worthy of at least a single smash burger and inside the park home run. Well, that's some nice pitching there. Off speed, Hugo couldn't catch up with it. Hugo will be disappointed with himself. And here we go. Micah Hargrave. Like I said earlier, one of the stars of the Central City. 16 new team at the recent Nationals. Coming from the Hamilton Raiders down in the wa mighty Waikato there. Wow, the Waikato. I'm not going to go so far as to call the Waikato mighty. Been a Highlanders fan. Oof, Roy. We don't, I thought I knew you. We don't consider those Chiefs to be mighty. We'll chop anyone down to size, but... Being a counties boy myself, uh, representing counties in rugby when I was younger, um, I uh, must say that I, I have a partial love for the Chiefs there when I do partake in watching rugby. So when we speak of chopping down to size, Mike, we'll be looking Jonah to take a, era. He'll look, be looking to take a mighty chop at this pitcher if he gets an opportunity. And mighty field seems to be a common word where and field has stayed in. Uh, sorry, outfielder stated. Sorry, getting a little bit sidetracked. My co-commentator getting a bit excited. Even without a Red Bull, his energy levels are high in the morning after his coffee. There was a nice pitch down there. Micah just looking at that one, acknowledges. Nice pitch. So I'm surprised the outfield staying in for Micah. I've seen him put them straight to the fence, and if he does that here, New It'll Zealand be could be in action. Back, so that's for sure. That pitch up. A hidden account and coach says green light Micah. I know your power. Big swing at that one. Can't catch up to it. Full count now. Good at bat, good battle. Micah needs to get his pitch here and get Decision New Zealand rolling. Time. Decision time. And cut back. Same pitch and Micah just slowly catching up to this. Hanging in there. Fouling that one off, great at bat here. Six pitches he's seen now. He knows. There's going to be one with his name on it. Yeah, Tries the curveball. Micah, he's up to the task. Fouls that one off. 
eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. This is brilliant from Micah Hargrave. Big swing and pops another one. How's that there. one down the right field line? Beautiful to watch this sort of an at bat, Mike. Yeah, it's a way to, you know, take a little bit of that finesse out of the picture there. Wear him down a little. Like you said, Roy, they got their infield playing quite shallow there. Another foul ball there. Down we're, first baseline. We're now going to the 10th pitch of this at-bat. I'll tell you what, if more of the New Zealand team had been able to take this sort of an approach, this pitch would be almost done already. Obviously referring there to the 95 pitch count that he'll have on him. Mike has used up now 10 of those. And Fouls it off card. again. Oh, my word. This is great to watch this battle. Pitcher won't give in. Micah won't give in. My best, your best. Fastball straight at him. 72 mile an hour. Micah says it's good. That's not quite good enough, though. Outside and there we go. Takes the walk after a battle on the plate there. That's just a brilliant at bat. He just wore him down. We have uh, number 11, Peter Yee, up to bat now. Left hand batter. Peter Yee, young superstar from the Central City Baseball Club. This it's, boy likes to put the ball in play. He does. He's also been known to lay down. A little bunt down that third base line. He'll go opposite field. He'll pull for power. He can do it all. That pitch outside. You see the catcher trying to just pull that back into the zone. But Mike's from Canterbury. They build him tough down there. You'll struggle to fool them. Tab, well, going back to the rugby, he's probably not a happy lad so far with his boys this season. Hard to complain with the success that team's had over the years as Peter fouls that one off. So Peter's another one of these New Zealand players. That's, he's up for a battle. He typically won't give in. Of course, his father truly is a super coach, Kohli Yee. International coach of great and multiple championship teams. Absolutely. Currently in New Zealand with a uh, an international team from Hong Kong. Baseball in this part of the world, alive and kicking. I believe uh, it's an under 14s grade level team uh, called the Future Stars. There, Roy. And they looked like future stars the other day as they played this Auckland Junior League team and. They beat them twice in a day, quite comfortably, as and Peter, Peter rips that. One out to that <laughs> and that is... That's a great bit of hitting. Out to the fence there. He's gone to the fence. Mike is coming round. He's going to be scoring here, and stand-up double for Peter Yee. Not a bad piece of work there at all. That is beautiful hitting from Peter. I've got to say, Mike can take a lot of the credit there. He wore this pitcher down, and Peter came in and took advantage of that. And what a great Monstrous position he put that ball out into out in the centre field there. Just just shy of the centre fielder, but running out to the fence and giving enough time for Micah to come from one all the way around to the home plate. Absolutely. Going left centre, I did comment that Peter Yee, he does quite like to go opposite field. Can pull for power, and this time he goes opposite field for power. And ben Bon Giovanni. Peter, a very clever base runner. He... Um, be looking to make some moves here too. We see there, as Mike commented on, Peter Yee dancing about at second base. Makes his way back now. We're looking to put Bob Ben Bon Giovanni to be pushing one through, bringing Peter around. Ideal situation. Peter's gone, and a throw down to three, and Peter's safe at three. Stolen base. And that's the thing about Peter Yee. He won't be up there as one of the fastest in the team. But he understands the game of baseball. He's a wily runner. 
Mike called that one. Saying how Peter likes to get in motion, and sure enough. Been lucky enough to see Peter progress over the last number of years with Central City, and um, he just keeps getting stronger and stronger. And the big thing that that stolen base has done is maybe makes it a little more difficult for this pitcher to throw that curveball. If he puts it in the dirt, goes past the catcher, then Peter will be home in a flash. And Peter having a phenomenal season for the under-16 Central City and 19s Central City this year. Absolutely. Two-way player, spectacular on the mound. Good bat, can play first base, any of the outfield positions. Ben Bongiovanni here, he'll be looking for his pitch. Cut foul. Ben will feel good about that. He's looked at a few pitches just on the outside of the plate. A two and two count there, Roy. I believe so. Certainly two strikes on him. Nice hold there. Just up and you were right indeed, Mike. So we have a full count now. Our batter's um, making the pitch a pitch. So we're wearing them down slowly. So we'll see what look to see what happens here with um, his pitch count and whether they make some changes. And that is a third strike, strike out side away. Big swing there, but it was a good at bat, and like you say, making the pitcher work. This bottom half of the New Zealand lineup really going to work there and they would have built a lot of confidence from that. Bringing the score back to one apiece, Roy. Great work there, Mike. You're all over it. I love the sarcasm there, Roy. No sarcasm at all, Mike. You're on game today. I think it might be... I think you're a little bit more focused without those red balls. I'm not sure they're great for you. Certainly wouldn't recommend them for any young kids out there. Fifty-one pitches through two innings, and let's just remember. I think it was eleven, maybe even twelve of those in that amazing at bat from Micah. I just hear, I just hear the scorers confirming that it was eleven pitches that at bat from Micah. Fantastic job. Wore the pitcher down, got on base, and obviously came around to score on that massive double from Peter Yee. Flashing the power that Mike Kovic knows Peter possesses. Mike, big supporter of this young player. Oh, absolutely. Seen him come from strength to strength. So coming, coming from the pedigree of Kohler Yee, his old man, well... You've got to expect nothing less, don't you, Roy? Absolutely. So, key situation here. We've talked about it a lot during this tournament. Shut down innings after scoring, really important. And that's what New Zealand needs here. Tara King, this big unit up on the mound. He's looking good early, but a shut down innings here is critical for this New Zealand team. We see number 27, one of Samuel Eva's two favourite players from this Indonesian team, step into the box, looking confident. Those are Putra in the batter's box now. We're looking to try and help regain the lead in this game. That's a nice pitch here from Tangara, but I think just out, just off the outside corner. Touchdown there. Hang right. Really looking good on the mound today. I think both teams enjoying these conditions. Cloud cover. No real wind to speak of. That one fouled off. Oh, 
couple of the young superstars of the Bayside Club. Just to our right here, Yama and Timmy Harvey, brother of Hugo Harvey. Great pitch there, Shane takes it. We have a missed oh, tired arms, I think. We got a bit of tired arms here. Wow, so we've seen this we've seen this song played before, so strike out, ball in the dirt. Shane Scanlon just a little bit scrambled as he takes it. You probably saw him just adjusting the mask and he's throwing the ball away down to first. And a strikeout ends up with a runner on first. Of course, in the game yesterday, a strikeout ended up with a runner on third base. Horrific situation for this New Zealand team. Yes, nobody wants those situations there, Roy. 56 here in the box, so make, looking at strike one. Boys making it hard work for Tangaroa King here. It's always a very disappointing situation when a strike at least for a runner on base. And interesting to see if they put him in motion. Tangaroa goes for the pickoff. Tangaroa can be slightly slow to the plate. What we mean by that is from the moment he lifts that front leg, it can take him a little while to deliver that pitch. and. That creates a situation where the runner there on first can actually steal the base on the pitcher. Catch not having a chance. He's going to have to take one minute and make sure that Jesse is actually at work on time for once. Jess, 74 there from Tangara King. Jesse, if you're watching this stream, I would suggest answering your phone when it rings. Tangara really getting into his work now. Interesting. Indonesian team not putting that runner in motion yet. Might be the time that they do. Tangaroa slow, runner goes, pops it up to first. That's gone foul on the side. Just, I think I saw just a little foot slip on that first step. Looking athletic over there. Not quite able to get to it and ball drops. Runner returns to first, calls time. Reties those shoelaces. It's just coffee.
Blanket band. <laughs> yeah. Better number eight in the box here. So not sure what happened to our uh, microphone there. Not sure whether it's worked at all so far this morning. If it hasn't, that's been disappointing. Well, Mike was on the phone, so that could be a part of it. No, it's working now. Uh, unfortunately, just with our equipment here, if a phone call does come in, it does tend to reset this microphone. But unfortunate. I think we're back online. I've been online the whole time with runner in motion. And we have another piece out to left field there. Catch by Peter Yee, bringing the side in to have a bat. Peter Yee right under that one. So really disappointing innings for New Zealand there is two strikeouts. Curveballs in the dirt. Shane Scanlon, catcher for New Zealand, is thrown away down to first base. As we commented on, Shane just a little bit of the yips throwing it down to first base. Indonesia, of course, retaking the lead. 3 1 as we go into the top of the third. This Indonesian pitcher number nine, 51 pitches already. Obviously, that marathon at bat from Micah, 11 pitches, worked a walk, created that situation with Peter Yee, ripped the ball into left centre, driving in. Micah, his teammate from the 16 National Championship, the Central City team that competed at that. Great to see New Zealand fighting and then just that unfortunate situation of strikeouts. Catcher doing the hard work, blocking the curveball in the dirt. Yeah. And unfortunately throwing the ball away down to first base. We saw it yesterday. We've seen it twice already here today. Very disappointing for this team. It'll be interesting to see whether, whether Shane takes out his frustration on the baseball. We could see him really take a rip at one. If he does that, the baseball burger could be on the line for the first home run of this tournament. We're going to see Corbin McKinley leading off for this New Zealand team. Played a lot of shortstop this tournament, but this final game, coaches made an adjustment, put him out into centre field. Possibly a little disappointed himself that play in that innings where He's Peter, great, Peter Yee. Player, but very, very hard on himself, which is it's not a bad thing in a lot of situations, Roy, to be hard on yourself. So Peter Yee just booted that ball out in the left field, and you saw Corbin McKinley not backing up his left fielder from centre. Low and outside. Peter recovered in time to make sure another run didn't recover. So Corbin at the plate. One ball. Important that he tries to get on here. Again, we'll be looking to recoup those extra run there. Or was it two? Sorry, what's our score out there, Roy? It was two runs, Mike. It's 3 1 now. 3 1. It's two balls on Corbin McKinley here. 
we have our infield here for Indonesia playing very shallow. Number nine on the mound still. Maybe they're underestimating Corbin a little bit. Working here. at 70 mile an hour. It's the outfield of course that Mike's talking about playing shallow. We've seen them do this to all of the shorter players in the New Zealand team. And just because they're shorter doesn't mean they don't have power. Corbin there, lead off walk. And that's really important. The coach comes out and the coach indicating that lead off walk that that'll do. We're gonna make a change. See the pitcher making his way off and big lanky frame of I'm going to go with Samuel Weaver's pronunciation, Sopatan, number eight. Probably got that wrong. Why well, nobody would dare correct a super commentator, Samuel Weaver. Be interesting to see if he actually shows up. This young man can keep throwing strikes because that's what this Indonesian team has done today throw strikes. Working away, mid 60s, 63. Just warm up pitch. I see Shane Scanlon here taking the opportunity to just get his eye in against this new pitcher. Of course, first pitcher for Indonesia was 70, 71 mile an hour. Sopatan. Not quite the same velocity, but. He can be effective, mid mid sixties. Anyone hitting the eighties, right? No, so we got Dan Amosa in the background here, father of TJ Amosa, just asking what the sort of pitching has been like in the tournament, and I can confirm that we haven't seen anybody above sort of 75, 76 mile an hour. No one yet touching the 80s, of course. New Zealand team last year that travelled to Easley to represent the Asia Pacific region had three players throwing over 80 mile an hour. Yeah, we've already done that. That was like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> Another one of the Kovic's coming into the commentary we, area We here. see Shane Scanlon into the box. Corbin McKinley over at first. New pitcher. Bit of pressure on him here. Shane Scanlon. Fielders seem to have drifted a little bit back further towards the fence with Shane up at bat. Yes, they definitely play two distinct positions. They play out for the big boys and in for those slightly smaller players in this New Zealand team. It'll be interesting to see here if coach puts Corbin in motion. Yeah, Corbin does go. go. Shane takes and the pitch, wild throw there by the catcher. <laughs> Corbin stole that easily. Great jump on the pitcher. Gives a little wave over to the New Zealand team. Shane with uh, Corbin in scoring position here now. Just found out that I think it super fan Aaron Trillo. He had his TV muted, so that's why he didn't realise we had a mic <laughs> issue earlier on. <laughs> We'd normally expect Aaron Trillo to be the first to comment on that sort of thing. Not today, as Shane takes a pitch there. I've seen Shane take a couple of those like that in this tournament, to be fair. Um, you know, lucky that elbow, those elbow guards are coming in handy this tournament. Have wow. a bloody sore elbow otherwise. Almost appears as though he 
deliberately puts that elbow in front of the pitch. But the pitch was well inside. We see now TJ Amosa, an opportunity here with one swing of the bat to have New Zealand right back in this game. It's been quite shallow still for um, the likes of someone like TJ and the way he hits there, Roy. And um, I would have thought they may have may have crept a little further back on, on TJ. Well, the way this young man hits, there's, there's no... There's every chance of a burger. There's no field that can hold him. You can't play deep enough. And it'll be interesting to see if... If he actually does swing for the fences or just looks to put the ball in play, hit one of those gaps. Down third, straight through third baseman. That's going to bring Corbin around. No, he's been held up at three. Corbin held there at three. So TJ. we have loaded bags. We have Mr. Liam Hay coming up to bat. He'll be wanting to get something going here, Roy. Nice contact there from TJ, hard off the bat. Be interesting to see how it was scored, potentially error on the third baseman. And like watching the Indonesian play the other day, um, I saw a lot of that similar thing with uh, the old glove to the ground thing and balls going through infielders, creating opportunity for the batting side. And you see the situation there as the coach not taking that. No matter what the score is recorded that as, the coach certainly saw it as an error as he immediately makes a change. New player into third base, and third base and left field switch. I think uh, when we saw that happen in yesterday's game there, Roy, I think there was a significant play at third after the change and it worked out for them. Yes indeed, that was actually a third base shortstop switch and the taller player from third base moved into shortstop and you're right, made a play immediately, very top of his reach. Liam rips it. And he catches it, gets the double there. Wow. Catch and tagged up on the bag for the double play. What a play there, Roy. That was a great grab. It's almost like you've called that, Mike. The, the switch at third base and the ball ripped to the new what third baseman. 79 the pitch there too, which is uh, getting no, up there. Uh, I think you'll find that was exit, oh, exit velocity off the bat, <laughs> Mike. Someone's trying to stitch me up here, Mr. Production Crew extraordinaire, Mr. Mackay. Yes, indeed, John Mackay set you up a treat. I don't think we're going to see 79 from this pitcher. Got a situation now where... Suddenly New Zealand two out, runners on first and second. So what looked like such a promising situation, Liam made great contact. And I mean, in that situation too, that was ideal for the Indonesian team, taking the lead runner out and getting the extra out on the same play. Well, there's no opportunity for the runner there. The ball hits so hard, straight to the third baseman. Just steps on his base. Unassisted double play. Inside pitch there for Messiah. So there, Roy Jesse reckons he was at work on time. I'm uh, questioning it a little bit, but he is there now. Feeling a bit better about this now. No, Don't just... have to rush off too early now, which is great. Jesse has often referred to himself as the most reliable Kovic. So we see Messiah in the box. That pitch, not close, non-competitive. Shane takes third. Great heads up base running. And just saw that skip away from the catcher and he was off straight away. What do we have here, Roy? A strawberry muffin, is it? Just a little bit of breakfast for me. Got to keep going. It's going to be a long day today. We've got to have energy for the final. Even though we'll be sitting here just admiring the work of super commentator, the man, the myth, the legend, Samuel Lever. I will be watching and listening from the comforts of notorious Moorpork and Avondale. On the big screen there, so if you want to get down and have a burger and watch the final, it will be on the screen at notorious Moorpork this afternoon. Messiah here, second at bat. And both times, struggling a little bit with the fact that it's four balls for a walk. Heading down to first after three. Let's see if that 
messes with his concentration. I don't think so. This boy is focused at the plate. Big bat. And indeed, up it goes. Out to right field. Very high. It. And it's dropped out in right field. Bringing a runner in, TJ Amosa. Bringing in two runs, I think you'll find. Two runs there brought in. That was a nice piece there. Real misread there as the centre fielder was going for it, but the ball was actually going to right field, and the right fielder moved very late. Maybe didn't quite pick it up in this cloudy sky, Mike. I think there may be a miscommunication between the centre and right field there on who was actually clear in taking that catch there. Of course, you'll be well aware. Go for the ball until you're called off. And, and that... Coach Ty, a little upset there that Messiah didn't hustle and thinks he may have, should have been at two. And that little error out there has cost him two runs and New Zealand now right back in at 3-3. Tie game. New Zealand will be happy about that, bringing the game back to a tie game. We see Hugo Harvey digging in at the plate. Real gamer, this kid. Messiah's gone. Messiah takes no off. No play at two. I'll tell you what, when a big boy like that gets up to speed, I wouldn't be standing in front of him there at second base. Tyria wanting to move these boys around <laughs> the bags pretty quickly here too, which is a very smart idea. Get them closer for scoring. We have a high foul ball over the behind home plate here by Hugo Harvey. So this I think seen a lot of drama. Couple of errors from the Indonesian team. Errors forced on them by this New Zealand team swinging the bat hard. And of course, that amazing play, the liner from Liam Hay that led to a double play. Outside pitch there. 64 mile an hour. Not watching a second baseman behind him there creeping in. Another foul ball out of way here. Yes, I'm pretty sure Messiah's aware out there, but you'd hate to think that he gets caught up with the hand clapping, the trying to distract the pitcher. I wouldn't like to see him get get caught too far off. As, Second baseman slides in again, looking to catch him. Messiah so takes an extra step. Hugo Two runs right. over third base. Messiah going back to two. Didn't have enough time there to, to, to get down to three. Hugo on bag now. So we have runners on one and two with Micah Hargrave up to bat. Strange situation there. Of course, two out. You would think that the runner would take off as soon as the ball is hit. If it's caught, it doesn't matter. That's the end of the inning. So... Opportunity missed there. Messiah should be on third, which would give that first and third situation. And we'd get to see Hugo in motion, but of course it brings this kid Micah Hargrave back to the plate. Such a fantastic effort in his last at bat. 11 pitches he took. Big swing this time, strike one. Of course, if Micah can reach, then what? what a man already with an RBI double, Peter Yee, coming behind him. It would be ideal for New Zealand right now to um, get a get a ball in, in play, bringing in a lead runner. Right. There we go by left Micah, centre. right through the middle of left and centre field, bringing in Messiah here, a bob, slight bobble by the shortstop there, and we have Micah going back to one, and... Luckily safe at 
too. I don't think the blue was watching there. Oh, he, oh, he was all over that, Mike. He was all over that. Hugo diving back in. Not a problem. It's funny. Um, he must have eyes in the back of his head there, Roy, because he was facing home plate then when that happened. Well, the replay will show us. You can look at that replay, Roy. I was watching. So again, it could have been two runs scoring if uh, Messiah on that earlier hit from Hugo had taken third. It would have obviously given Hugo a chance to steal second. And so now we have Peter Yee in his last at bat. He stand up double. Absolutely, stand up double, driving in a run. Micah all the way from first base. Taking a ball for the first pitch. Number 11, he'd be looking to drop one of those ones and if he was in uh, the Korean or teams of the likes, wearing the number one jersey seems to be the one you want here, Roy. Typically indicates the ace of the hey, team. There's a nice little punch down. Third baseman get... across, makes a throw. We've seen his arm, of course he was the starting pitcher, but New Zealand doing a good job there. Had some good luck go their way. Had some bad luck go against them. Indonesia doing a good job to limit the damage. Oh, I think I might have got our score wrong. Looks like we have a catcher change here. We have a couple of changes. So, John Mackay once again slipping up, getting the score around the wrong way. But it is, of course, New Zealand four, Indonesia three. We have another Kovic on the diamond. Might be an opportunity for Mike to just exit the box and get his excitement out because he does tend to struggle when Alex is out there. Excitement gets the better of him and I can't say I blame him. Um, it is... 4-3 of course Mike, New Zealand taking the lead there, now in the bottom half of the innings, they'll look to hold it, one of these shutdown innings, we see here a shot of Alex Kovic, just getting his warm ups in, Taylor Hocking there, big grin on the mound as Alex, it's been a long week for him, his voice just breaking as he calls, falls in. Crackling away. Been a great supporter. Has not got in to a game situation until now. Critical moment for him. I think you'll find he pitched in one of the earlier games. Of course, I always forget about the fact that he is an undercover superstar pitcher. Go, boy. Tanara King. Back up on the mound. Going to work. Again, New Zealand will be looking to quickly get back in that dugout. Nice pitch nice. there by Tangara King. Great pitch. Tangara, of course, a little disappointed. He would have been hoping to be pitching in a final this afternoon, but hasn't affected him mentally. He's really brought his game here today. Down innings here, critical. Goes to that curveball. He's gone lots of that curveball in this outing. Possible that the Indonesian team just starting to see it a little bit out of the hand. It's been a few times through the order. We have one ball, one strike here on Tangara King. Straight back to Tangara. He's got time. And he makes the and throw to that's first. that's one out. Really calm play there from Tangara. Little ground ball back to him. He knocked it down. Didn't panic. Took his time. Gathered the ball. Made the throw to first. And that's a good way to start this innings. Indonesian team. Just hear them. Come on, T. Come on, T. Trying to lift again. Something they've done all tournament long, keep lifting. 
Hit by pitch there. Wow, that's... This player did not flinch at all. Just took that. Might have been a different story had it been a fastball from Tangara, but the curveball. Those are put right up into the batter's box here. See him there in the box. Crowding the plate. Tangara, of course, not afraid to pitch inside as we just saw. Unfortunately, leading to a hit batter. Runner goes. Yeah, way to go, boy. Really st st stole that base quite easily, really. Throw down from Alex, didn't have an opportunity. Player already sliding in there. Runner looking to go to three by the looks of things here. Hugo Harvey Can looking to jump. hold him on. And there's the bunt. That is foul. No, no that he's is caught not it foul. still. I think what you will find is once that ball had travelled as far as it did, you really almost needed to just leave it, hoping that it would go foul. It was definitely probably hidden out outside the line there. Chalk there, uh, Roy, but hey. Once again, a bit of a mental error there from Tangarao King on the mound. Runners on the corners now. <laughs> Bump went down, it really pitches ball there, because as soon as the first baseman comes in, there's no opportunity. He's going to be wanting to keep these runners at bay here. Expect a runner to go here. We're we going to see our typical... Absolutely, runner goes. Interesting situation there, the catcher coming up to throw. Not sure what the thinking was there. You heard the coach on the side hold it. But he thought he had an opportunity at second. Perhaps a little fortunate that runner didn't come in from third. Great pitch there by Tangaraa King. 71 mile an hour. Very consistent in this outing, Tangaraa. Indonesian coach. Over there saying, come on, pal, what are you doing? Shouting out his instructions. Great pitch there. Beautiful nice strike. Speed pitch there. That'll take uh, the batter out of the box. That's uh, two down now. See there, that pitch just slightly more elevated. So catcher there, Alex Kovic, had opportunity to just catch that one. Obviously then strike three automatically out. There's a miscommunication between catcher and pitcher. Tangara steps off, resets. Foul that ball, ball down there. Ripped foul. Mike Kovic not appreciating our coverage here. He wants it to be more focused in on the catcher. As we look there, his son Alex Kovic, he's, he's pretty amped. He's pretty excited about his boy being out there. Can't say you blame him. He's been a workhorse in the bullpen for the boys this, this tournament, which is um, he's doing his job as part of the team. Great right? pitch uh, there. Great. So he will be happy to get out there and have a have a jam on the diamond now. But like I say, he's been doing the work out there with the boys, warming them up, getting them ready for their pitching outings. It's Tangaral King now ahead. Two strikes on this batter. That's what team teamwork's all about, Roy. If he can put him away here, of course, that will be the shutdown innings. New Zealand so desperately need. Outside. Hear the call there from first base, got him. Not sure what he was watching, that pitch not particularly close. Gives you an indication though of how much is on the line here, how excited this New Zealand team is. Two down here, we want to be shutting down these runners on bag and scoring positions. Coming in for a bat. 
And that's a great pitch there by Tangaroa King. Beautiful Pitching work. Pitching on the third one. That is out. Side away. Exactly what we needed there. Shut down innings. New Zealand team. Maintain their lead through three innings. New Zealand will be coming out looking to advance more runners. Taking taking this score up, they'd like to get a bit of a lead going here into the later innings in the game, mid, middle of the game. Be interesting to see now as the momentum of this game has shifted. You hear the excitement from the New Zealand team, the Indonesian team going a little quiet. Of course, up and singing earlier in the game. 23 steps back up onto the mound. We have a new pitcher warming up here. I, I believe that's um, Dharma. Absolutely. Correct there, number, uh, Roy. Number 23. A little bit of gas to him. 72 mile an hour just with his first warm up pitch. See there. New team. Looking on. Excited to see what he's got in his arm today. Last day of the tournament, of course. Final opportunity for these teams to really show what they've got. Final opportunity for this New Zealand team to get a win in this tournament in this third place game. No, these are the things that I just say over here. <laughs> Coaches will be focused on really keeping their team heads in the game. Don't Great let anything 71's slip. in the warm up. Boys will be looking to punch that out there and uh, get on bag. Almost had a little flash there of the bad to the bone. There. Yeah. Just hear the umpire in the background announcing the substitution to the scorers. So we Ben Bon Giovanni leading off the settings for the New Zealand team. His bat is not quite going this tournament. We've seen heroics from him in the local competition. He's got an opportunity here. Start things off. Best view of Roy there we've got. I've just got a picture of the back of his head. Looking pretty there today, Roy. Well, as I said earlier, just wearing a Oakland A's cap, just celebrating the fact that they got their first win of this new season on the board for the season, 162 game season, and the Oakland A's potential record now at the end will sit at 160 wins and two losses. Did have a look at when we were over there in America in May in California, driving to the Oakland Stadium. Um, Looking at ticket prices, we were we 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 could have had uh, directly behind the plate seats for the same ones we got at Dodgers that are nosebleeds. Of course, city of Oakland, boycotting. Not the team; they're boycotting the owner. The owner, of course, looking to move that team to Las Vegas. If they go to Vegas. I'll still be there. I'll still be supporting them, but. It would be great to see the city of Oakland find a way to keep the team. Yeah, it would be a shame for, for that to happen, but I think, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think it's uh, probably a little bit hard to spark that fan base back up there. It's, uh, you know, they haven't, haven't got the, the numbers they would li like to see at the park, which is very unfortunate there, Roy. Yes, indeed. Although, as I say, that's more of a boycott on the owner. Of course, the Bay Area, fantastic part of the world. A lot of fans of this amazing Oakland Athletics team. One of the top teams in the history of Major League Baseball. 
Unfortunately though, this season they'll be in a battle for the cellar of the American League West with the Anaheim Angels. Or are they now the LA Angels? Or are they the we LA ben Angels bon of Anaheim? Ben Bon Giovanni up to bat here. First pitch about to come in. And that is an inside pitch there for ball one for Ben. In the batter circle, we've got Corbin McKinley trying to time up these the new pitcher here, Dharma. That's that's a tough call, I believe, there on Ben Bon Giovanni. It looked quite outside there, but hey, the umpire, you don't complain with him, you can't change his mind. Of course, we'll point out that we are slightly side on. Difficult to tell exactly where that pitch is. Umpire's got the best view in the house. That one there was that, on the money. That one was definitely through the heart of the plate. And ben knew it. A reasonable amount of movement on that too, dropping in there nicely. See him there in the box, determined now with two strikes on him. Really needs to get things going again for this New Zealand team. My pitch there. If they can keep the pressure on at the end of a, a long tournament. It would be just demoralising for this Indonesian team if New Zealand can pile on some more runs here. Side pitch there. Very close pitch. Full count now here on his first batter of his mount being on the mound. Last pitch. Pitcher would have wanted it. Very close to the spot that was called a strike earlier. And that ball Both up. Pitch and we're taking the walk there. Ben on bag. He can get around those bags too, which is um, not a bad thing for New Zealand here. So we have Corbin McKinley coming up to bat now. It's exactly 23. What, it's exactly what this New Zealand team needed. They needed Ben to reach bases. A coach for Indonesia will come out, make a visit with his pitcher. Never happy when you walk the lead off better in an innings. Yep, five pitches straight off the bat which is not necessarily what a pitcher wants but hey it is is what it is and he'll just to get a gentle reminder to reset reset focus on the new batter see the umpire there indicating that's one visit of course is Corbin will be looking to push uh, Ben Bon Giovanni around the diamond only so many visits that you're allowed. If he makes a second visit in this innings, he will have to replace the pitcher. Come on, Corb, come on, Corb! 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 Come So after this pitcher got ahead early against Ben Bon Giovanni, he had two strikes on him. He's just struggled to find the zone. And potentially the New Zealand team will hold that runner at first until they see a strike thrown. Don't want to give up and out. He lays down the bar. He's playing it at two. They get the out at two. Corbin's through one, safe at one. So you see there that bunt just straight back to the pitcher really, just not able to put it down the line. Up to bat we have now number two, Alex Kovic. New Zealand team would have liked to have seen that bunt down the line, just make sure they advance the runner. Kovic has beautiful Bruce Bolt gloves. Must have parents with a lot of money to be able to afford those. Not cheap at all, those gloves. I think you're going to find uh, he works very hard down at Notorious Moorpork and he paid for those himself. Right. Oh, it's a great sign. 
most other things though, yes, parents come into play. <laughs> of course they do. So Alex here taking the first pitch he's seen this tournament. Hey boy. Just see there, Coach Tidia Thompson just giving him a few little pointers. Just trying to relax him, I think. Do what he can do. First at bat of the tournament. Corbin McKinley at first. Interesting if they put him in motion here. One out. Tough pitch there. Nice curve. Spinning that ball beautifully. And Go Alex, time, buddy. Alex now behind the count. One ball, two strikes. Mike Kovic remain quite restrained here. Alex. That's a good cut there. That was a tough pitch again. That curveball's looking pretty nasty, but Alex manages to foul it away. You see TJ Hermosa racing across. Pick up that foul ball. Alex digs back in. And that ball skips away, that'll be a chance for Corbin. Take second base, he'll have a little bit of a look, but the catch is over there. Yeah, Alex will be looking to get on bag. He's, um, if you look at the regular season, he's in uh, top three stolen bases of the season. He's not the fastest guy out there, but he's a smart runner. It's been said a few times that when he's stealing a base, it looks like he's running in quicksand. Three. Oh, that's right, his dad's sitting right beside me. I probably shouldn't mention that, but... Don't make a man violent. <laughs> but he's a smart player, and he gets a good jump. And that's the key to stealing the base. You get a good jump on the pitcher. It's not necessarily about straight line speed. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. High fastball, Alex frustrated with himself chasing that, probably up and Check down it up, the bro. zone. Check it up, it's all good. Hey, hey TJ. Let's go, TJ. TJ and Mosa are up to bat now. So two out now, runner still in scoring position. TJ and Mosa, as Mike has pointed out, been hitting really good this tournament. Rip one past the third base, and might have been scored an error. I'm not sure, don't have the official scoring in front of me. Low pitch there. But when I looked at it, the ball was almost past the third baseman before he even realised it was coming. It was well hit by TJ. Got a lot of power. Real opportunity here for TJ. Get himself an RBI. Corbin getting a nice lead out here on second. Hoping TJ's gonna bang one out like that yeah. and straight past the second base. Corbin's coming around third. TJ's going for two. He's gonna be an easy stand up two. He's going for three. I believe he's a stand up triple here. TJ does it again. Well, we talked about his power and once again, ground ball. And he's basically hit that right through the second baseman. Great spot there, running right out to the fence in between the outfielders as well. Nice stand-up triple there for TJ and Mosa. Just got to wake up our production manager, John McCoy. Update that score. Oh, he's on to it. <laughs> he's doing Roy gets a little bit ahead of himself sometimes when everyone's doing their jobs. And... <laughs> he's doing a great job today as we update that score. New Zealand now up five no. runs to three. Tidia Thompson just congratulating himself on a nice throw. Getting that equipment of TJ's back to the dugout. Anticipating the innings continuing. Two out, of course. I believe that was a 28 mile an hour glove throw there. Jeez, it's good reading on that glove throw. Of course, we now see captain of this New Zealand team, Liam Hay. 
he will certainly be looking to drive the runner in here. Real Another one. scoring opportunity here for New Zealand. Unfortunate situation for him in that last innings when he absolutely ripped one down the third base line, but straight to the third baseman, who took the catch and turned two. Outside pitch there for Liam, he read that one well. Knock, knock. Who's there, Roy? You're not supposed to say both of those. You're supposed to say knock, knock. I'm supposed to say who's there. Otherwise, the joke doesn't work, Mike. <laughs> Liam digs in again. Outside pitch I think, there for Liam Hay again. That'll be two ball balls for him now. Liam will be wanting that one right down over the meat of the plate so he can try and punish that thing. BJ's ready to go here on third. Foul ball. Just uh, spent a little bit of time with Liam yesterday. He said he's just struggling a little with the speed of the pitching in this tournament. It's just... A lot slower than what he's used to. Prem's player here in the local competition. Well, he's facing pitches 80, even up to 90 miles an hour. Sometimes those adjustments can be not that easy to, to do sometimes uh, there, Roy. Absolutely. There was an off-speed off pitch there, giving the first strike on to... Sorry, second strike on Liam. Two balls, two strikes, of course. Liam fouling that one off earlier and just watching that. That wasn't his pitch. Curve ball, the outside half of the plate. Strike, and he's off running. Is he going to get a play here? Yeah! And the ball goes over the first, and that brings TJ and Mosa in, advancing the score to. Two runs ahead now. New, New, New Zealand team now up 6-3 and... Um, three, sorry the, there. The school that I went to, 6-3 would give us a three-run lead. Any any higher counting than that, though? The school he went to, he'd be in trouble. Mike Kovic obviously didn't grow up out west. He grew up in South Auckland and... Wasn't known. A very great Catholic primary school I went to. He went there... Every Thursday. I see Messiah now. That was bought lunch day, I tell you, Roy. <laughs> yes. Bought lunch day. And we used to get a donut, a Coke, and a pie for a dollar fifty, Roy. Which is the reason why that was the day that Mike turned up at school. Unfortunately, they didn't schedule maths on that day, so struggling a little bit with the lead. <laughs> it's Liam Hay now, first base. Commented a lot during this tournament. Liam Wheels Hay. Wouldn't surprise us to see him in motion. So I'm looking for a rip one. marginal without the error there, um, Roy, but he sure enough got there. This is baseball. Anything wow. can happen. We've seen that go against the New Zealand team enough with a strikeout leading to a player getting on base. So nice to see the luck turn a little bit for this New Zealand team. We've seen this all game. This Indonesian team very wary of the power of the big bat that Messiah swings. Throwing a lot of balls to him. Again though, Roy, I see the Indonesian outfielders playing relatively shallow for what sort of a batter they have in the box here. Indeed, I'd be very wary about putting one on the outside half. If he goes off as a field, that right, fielder, on the that right fielder is very, very shallow. Yeah, that, oh, it's going to create all sorts of problems if uh, Messiah hits it out that way there, Roy. I see one of the top batters of the Auckland Divisional Competition, Paul Harvey, just looking at that position and going, my gosh, I'd love to see an outfield that shallow against me. Big cut there by Messiah. Speaking of Paul Harvey, we see his son, Hugo, on deck circle, supporting Messiah in the box. Tuhuro is going to be protecting that plate here. He's going to be wanting to get that contact. 
carry on this innings hopefully. Pick off attempt. You're not going to catch wheels, hey. Just got too much speed, that boy. Easily diving back. So I had Dixon at the box. Seen a lot of pitches. This is danger time for the pitcher. Hayes gone. Messiah Swinging strike out there. Big cut at that beautiful, beautiful curveball. And that'll bring the innings to an end. Not a bad innings there for New Zealand. We got that that lead now. We, we're wanting to keep that now. We want to get a couple of quick outs here. Get back in there and try and add to our lead. Indonesia will be coming out trying to regain a few runs here. Absolutely. Of course, the danger here for New Zealand is they're playing at the top half of the innings, Indonesia. Home team for this game. So they get to bat last. So even though they're three runs down, they can finally start to do some damage here to Tangaroa King. New Zealand have to maintain their focus. Here in the background there, the man simply known as Disco. One of the fantastic grounds crew here. Philip Field. And again, I will say it again, the boys in the ground crew have kept this diamond looking super sharp this whole tournament there, Roy. Yeah, it's not just the grounds crew we give thanks to. Of course, these umpires here, scorers. It's been some arduous games for the scorers. We've got the team over there at the cafeteria. And pumping out that food all week long. We got another team situated at the Pakaranga Rugby Club. That's where the teams have been going for lunch, for dinner. I hear a highlight last night for all the teams international, especially the old Hungy. Went down a treat, I believe. Indeed, Godfather Dom doing his work there with a huge group of volunteers. Looking for the future to have a Mount Wellington baseball club, which would be great for New Zealand and Auckland baseball there, Roy, wouldn't it? Absolutely, of course. Growing sport here in New Zealand. Still a minority sport. Everything the done on the uh, do there. everything done on the smell of an oily rag. Relying on volunteers. I see in the background one of those fantastic volunteers, Glenn Campbell. We that have a slide out to shortstop there, taking the catch. Ben Bongiovanni, one out. It's exactly what they'd like, one pitch, one out. Of course, Glenn Campbell, he's been driving teams around. He's also one of the key members of this HB Hawks club. One of the many people known as the godfathers of baseball here in New Zealand. Thank Glenn for his efforts during this tournament. Alex Kovic and Tyre are communicating there over signs for what pitches they're wanting there from Tangaroa. Ball in the dirt. One of the things I will say about Glenn Campbell is, like many people here, we don't just do one job. So he's been a driver for the teams by day and then he's actually been a security guard at night. Staying in a camper van here at the ground. Chris Nardi in the batter's box here, left hand batter for Indonesia. Tangaroa King, this inning started so well for him, he'll look to keep that momentum going. That's a pop up, that's out of play, long way out of play. Going with one ball and one strike here. See there in the outfield, the Korean team arriving here at the ground. Looking very uniform as usual. Nice oh. catch there by Messiah. Bullet out to one, takes it, not a problem. Well, there's a reason why you have a tall first baseman and we saw it right there. Few players, Great take. Few players in this team, that could have been trouble. 
out into right field, but with Messiah there, he just reached up, snagged it. Canicorn. So two out here. No damage so far. Great pitch there, but didn't go his way, unfortunately. Coach there just asking for confirmation from the catcher. Pitch inside. Catcher gives a little nod. Yes, it was, coach. Yes, it was. That one, on the other hand, rocked to left field. And slight fumble there, but the guy's still safe at one. Won't advance to two, thankfully. One of the things that we have seen a bit of in this tournament, something I don't entirely appreciate, the bat flip there. It surprises me that... Uh, the boys do that sort of thing on, um, you know, well, bat, anything other than a massive home run, to be fair. And bat flipping a single. Well, I mean, we've seen... Bat, I've seen bat flips on walks. I've seen bat flips on fly balls. <laughs> seen bat flips on bat flips. <laughs> <laughs> interesting here. Indonesia have looked to test out the arm of this new catcher. Bat flips on bat flips on bat flips. And will they look to Seen do it again? It wouldn't surprise me. That's good. Runner goes. Rucked foul. Runner will be going back to one. So it'll be fascinating to see if they keep putting this runner in motion. He's Kind of dragging his feet getting back to first. It's been a long week for these players. Gets a big lead. And he'll go again. Oh dear. I've seen a ground ball there to first base. Should really have been an easy out there. The, but runner, just... the runner for Indonesia there, if he hadn't put a bit more of a hustle in there, I thought he might have been coming home there, Roy. Potentially an unfortunate situation there, that ball just through the glove. Messiah, nice play earlier in the innings for that one. Which could have got the New Zealand team back into the dugout, ready to get those bats moving again. You see there that runner, third base, so first and third. This is why the hustle's always important. We've seen this situation a lot in the tournament, runners in first and third. We will undoubtedly see that runner break from first. Kovic relaying the signs first and third situation with authority there Roy well, wouldn't be at all surprised to see Tony Riders look for a little pick off here at first we've seen it all tournament long the runner just takes off and he takes off again we see catcher just bobbling the ball I think they were looking for that opportunity of a throw down to third that little bobble regained it but no time there for the throw decided that you know, don't try to force a throw in that situation great Another pitch there throw. Tony King. would have been easy for the pitcher here to think I should be sitting back down in the dugout and lose a little bit of focus but not Tonga Roa Rolling right along. Two strikes now on the batter. And that ball right to left field. Another bobble out in left field there. And the other runners coming home here. Single bringing in two runners there. That's going to bring the game a bit closer again there, Roy. You see the... Indonesian runners celebrating that. That is what the Indonesian team needed there, but not what the New Zealand team wanted. This is actually what the Indonesian team has been known for this whole tournament. There's no quit in this team. And you wouldn't expect it. But after a lot of baseball, it's easier said than done. And narrow this game up. 6-5. Runner goes. Alex. Ball's gone through him. He 
scored a pass ball, I believe. Run it to second. Now they're a base hit away from tying this game. commented on it earlier and the nice Asian team seemed right. like they had a little bit of energy sucked out of them but now they're back up dancing away singing away it's the highs and lows of the dugout so you, you hear the singing you hear it quiet you hear them up on the fence again Roy it's a long game so watch out for that high highs low lows try to stay up Great pitch there, Tangaroa of King. Beautiful pitch. You see the batter there. Making it the pitches count here. The batter worried it was going to hit him and the ball just... turned right on him, straight over the plate. Chuck this one right down and blow it past the batter for an out. Runner goes. Back up the middle. Ben Bon Giovanni across. Takes the ball. Great play. Throws there him out by one. Ben Bon Giovanni on the running throw there. Taking the last out. Side away there for New Zealand. Keeping the lead marginally. And you saw that runner for Indonesia. Absolutely committed. Head first, dive into first. Not sure that that's always the quickest way to get there. <laughs> so we're through four innings now. This third place match. New Zealand up six runs to five. New Zealand really need to stay focused here. As we've commented, this Indonesian team just don't quit. Coming right back there, two more runs. Take a little bit of a look here at what supplies have been packed for me. Patricia Antanovic doing a great job. Making sure I'm fed. Probably does too good a job, some would say. Make sure I'm fed just a little bit too much. there come from the school of if you've got nothing nice to say say nothing at all I do appreciate that Indonesian team last warm-up pitch well, Hugo Harvey leading things off for New Zealand Flavoured coffee. Don't normally do the instant coffee, but obviously for a thermos full of coffee, that's the way to go. Keeps me going during the day. It's Hugo now. Into the box. Harvey putting one out to second base here. One out to start. Wow. Micah Hardgrove up now. Same as the bottom of the fourth. One pitch, one out. Let's see if Micah can take it to 12 pitches at this at-bat, Roy. 11 at his last at-bat. It was a sensational at-bat from Micah. Of course, walk to walk. to work. Work to walk. <laughs> work to walk. a long walk to work from here, Roy. It would indeed. Not so long for me, obviously. Uh, it's worked just in Mount Wellington, close to the field here, for Lett Field. Still would be a long walk there, Roy. Lloyd Owlsmore Park, home of the HB Hawks. Outside pitch there. Just a reminder, 2pm for the final. Be good to see a crowd down here. It's going to be a thrilling game between Guam and Korea. 
Good to see a crowd in the shop. And if you can't make it all the way out to the HP, beautiful HP grounds here today, we have it on a live screen. Notorious more pork today. Grab a burger and watch the game. If you didn't guess, Mike uh, is getting paid in advertising for his commentary job here. 69 mile an hour there, just inside. And going back to all the dugouts being looked after with the uh, water. Absolutely, oh, yeah. pure NZ. Pure NZ, another central city volunteer slash contributor to this tournament. Indeed, Malcolm Vito and the team at Pure NZ. Thank them for everything they do for baseball. Not the least, allowing Malcolm to play in our local competition. It's an honour for anybody that comes up against him. Really one of the legends of the sport. There's a strike there. Micah taking all the way there on a three ball count. So now three balls, one strike. Hitters count. Only needs to go if it's his pitch. Micah did think it was his pitch. It turned out not to be, and we now have a full count. And it seems to be the, the same setup for this outfield in the Indonesian squad there. They're very shallow, right field particularly shallow there. Foul tip. Foul tip held onto by the catcher and that'll be a strikeout. Next up to bat we have Peter Yee. So two outs now in this innings. We'll see if Peter can get something started. Big fan of the two out rally. And that's what Peter Yee will be looking for right here. Nice and relaxed in the box there, Peter. <coughs> Swing there by Peter for strike one. You might uh, be losing your spot in the commentary box for a few minutes soon if. Uh, New Zealand District Administrator makes his way over here. It'd be good to get a bit of a word with him and find out about his thoughts on this tournament. I'll be more than happy to have a break from you there, uh, Roy. Now, if you uh, if you want to go and see Vaughan Wyber, the District Administrator, and send him my way, Mike, you can get yourself some fresh air. This New Zealand team with two out. Devin Schultz. Wide pitch there for Peter. Peter won't, won't give up on this at bat. He's a real fighter, Peter Yee. Peter puts that to second base. Second baseman bobbles it, and Peter's speed, he beats it out. I'll go down as E4. Really the speed of Peter there. Uh, the Roy, pressure on. looks like you've got, you're stuck with Mike there. Um, you've been denied a new uh, commentary position for a, for a few minutes there. Couldn't pay enough to get him in here. Well, he is a busy man, of course. He said he didn't want to be set up like Samuel Eva has been. Samuel Eva, of course, loves the opportunity of getting behind the mic. Obviously, uh, a renowned streamer. Outside, piece, outside pitch there. Goes by the tagline, Anarchy 77. Feel free to look him up. My oh my, is he good at those shoot him up games you know, I question sometimes whether he's a streamer or a gamer but each to their own as Peter takes a big lead so yes as I was saying Vaughan Wyber district administrator here obviously very busy during this tournament also an assistant groundskeeper part of the GC the grounds crew here at Lloyd Ellsmore Park and 
It would have been great to have him in here just to get a bit of a feel for his thoughts on the tournament, but uh, unfortunately when a man's doing that many jobs, a little bit too busy. Peter takes off. Easy st stolen base to two there for Peter. Just G. cruises in there. He's such a talented base runner. The great hop there. Ben now got Peter in scoring position here, so he'll be looking to put that ball in play here. We'll probably get a good look here of Peter dancing about. Super confident on the bases. Inside pitch there for Bon Giovanni. See Peter's really been well coached in terms of taking a big secondary lead. Which of course, as the pitcher goes to deliver the pitch, he just jumps out. Three or four extra steps. Always on his toes. Ben Bon Giovanni walked, a, walked in a tough at bat his last at bat. Now he'll be looking to get himself a hit in this game. And if he can do that, I'm sure Coach Tidier Thompson will send Peter home. As Peter goes, that's, that's an easy stolen base. Once again, just such a wily base runner. Stole it on the pitcher. Cola Yee, if you're watching this. I think you'll find that your son might be a slightly better base runner than you, Cola. Peter looking really good out there. Low fastball. Swinging strike there for Bon Giovanni. He's putting the side away. He's been swinging over the top of that one and that'll bring us to the end of the New Zealand's at bat here. So we go to the bottom of the fifth now. Just a one run lead for New Zealand. Just hearing in the background there. New pitcher coming onto the mound for New Zealand. Nico Waru. Teammates, of course, call him TK. He's got a bit of pressure on him here, just a one run lead to New Zealand. Bats unable to do their job there. Top half of the innings. TK pitched very well earlier in the tournament. Commented on it during that outing. It's very deceptive out of the hand. Ball tends to just sneak up on you. Gets to you quicker than you think. And hard to read the difference between his pitches. So you saw a lot of batters swinging early at his off-speed pitching. Be interesting to see if TK's got that same deception today. Indonesian team. Smell that burnt toast there, Roy. Mike, uh, that's like burnt toast to me. <laughs> You'd expect a chef to understand these sorts of things, but that is not burnt toast. That is most definitely coffee roasters over the road here. Cascades Road, of course. I prefer roast turkey. Very disheartened by uh, looking up. My favourite food in Disneyland the last time I was there was a roast turkey sandwich. And... They don't do it anymore. Not a happy man. Well, harsh message coming in from Superfan Aaron Trillo. Just saying, you like the roast turkey because you are a turkey, Mike Kovic. I'll take that. I'll take that. Wow, it's hard not to from Superfan Aaron Trillo. Loves the game, that man. Recovering on his couch. We wish him the best. It's been five straight days on the couch for Aaron Trillo. Just a standard weekend in his life. Wouldn't that be beautiful, Roy? Five days of nothingness. 
Sounds like a dream come true. Well, I don't know about you, but it's been hard to beat being down here at the grounds watching some high quality baseball. So we're going to the bottom of the fifth now. New Zealand up 6 5. TK Wadu on the mound. Nice pitch there, I think, just slightly inside there. Just a little bit of adjustment on our pitcher here, just to make sure we can see that Indonesian team up in the dugout, singing away, supporting their team. Two balls. Indonesia getting up on the fence now for the batter. They're going to be looking to recoup some runs here. That's a great pitch there by TK. Roy's left the commentary box here. And a great pitch there by TK. That'll bring it to two and two now. Be looking to throw this one down and exit the batter from the box. Back to the dugout. Nice and composed there. Foul ball into his leg. Inside of the knee there, the ball connection off the bat. Never feels that great, that one. Out comes the quick magic spray. I'm sure he'll be fine to carry on. We have our number one medic sprinting from the outfield there, but not sure he's going to be needed for this one. He's looking a bit sluggish the better, but I think he's going to be okay. Yep, he's given the head nod. We're back into it here. Waru on the mound. He's going to be looking to put this batter away now. Three and two the count here. Nico will be wanting to put this one down, put the batter away. Great pitch there by TK. That'll be the first down in this innings. Great start for TK out on the mound there. Looking nice and composed on the mound there. Here he goes, setting up for another great pitch there by Nikau Waru. Perfect, perfect placement there over the plate. That'll be two strikes for Nico now. He's got a foul there. Strike on the first there. Again, he'll be want to get that one down and put another one into the dugout. Little high on that pitch, but nothing to worry about here. That comes down and looked like it was in the zone there. Ball called on him there. Some really nice movement on that pitch there. Play down three. Amosa bumbles and no play at one. They have a runner on. Opportunity here for New Zealand now to make a double play here. 
also an opportunity for Indonesia to advance their runner. One down. Some great pitching by Nikau so far though. A little bit high in the zone there. So Mike, did you think that TJ had an opportunity to make that play or was that just going to be way too hard, even if he I had think, been able to glove it? I think if he gloved it, he had the arm to get it there. The boy, the the batter we had at bat there though, he's got wheels on him, so it could have been a touch and go play there. Another nice strike there by TK Waru. Nikau. Again, looking very composed on that mound there. Wouldn't surprise me to see Indonesia put the runner in motion here. And he does go. Foul ball. The runner will be going back. Get an opportunity here to see if PK has a little pick-off move. See if you can catch that. It's up on the Run count there, first. pitches count here. Big glove there by Kovic. A slide step. Perhaps a bit worried about that runner who obviously took off in that previous pitch. And with that lead here, looking to go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The home plate umpires called him out. I felt like I saw the same thing there. Foot was off the bag. Taking that out there, the play from catcher Alex Kovic. Great glove out there. So what you'll find there is Mike, a little bit excited. Up, fired up for that one. Hopefully you had a chance to just turn your TVs down a little bit. But what happened is the strikeout and the batter walked back across the plate heading towards the dugout. So oh. Alex Kovic came up to make the throw and the batter's been called for obstruction. And due to the fact that the batter was already out on the third strike, of course the runner then is called out as there must be an out called on that batter's interference. So That works just as well for me, Roy. Leads to... A double play for the New Zealand team. Works just as well. The outs got made. We're back in the dugout to have another crack at these Indonesian pitches here. Probably, probably get any idea here. Any idea of us not being biased in the box has disappeared for this last game. We're desperate for a New Zealand one. And going into the sixth innings, thus far, looks like we could be on track for it. New Zealand leading by one, looking to maintain that lead. We still have the same pitcher on the mound for Indonesia. I do know that some of these teams really struggling back into this tournament to have enough pitches available of course as we've explained during the tournament following pitch smart rules very strict on the number of pitches you can throw the number of days you can throw the number of days rest you have to have after you throw baseball does a great job of looking after the arms of these young superstars you see Corbin McKinley be the leadoff hitter here for New Zealand Couple of our younger members of the squad now lead off and batter in the batter circle. A yeah, good little reminder there from Mike Kovic. There's, I believe, only four players of this team that well, are actually too old to be able to come back and do it all again next year. So the rest of the squad get to spend a year thinking about it and then hope to be back here for some revenge on these international teams. 
Corbin McKinley up to bat. Step See what he can box. do. Big cut at that first one, fouls it away. Just looking down, see some applause there from first base coach here, Ton Laird. He's been a little bit disappointed with some of the approaches that the, this New Zealand team has taken during the tournament, but he's looking pretty happy today. McKinley now to behind in the count, two strikes, it's number 23 for Indonesia, he's pitched well. It'll be one strike on Corbin. Looked like the game could get away from Indonesia, they were down 6-3 at one point, they fought back to 6-5. Two innings left of course, a seven innings game as all of these little league games are. And we've seen a few long seven innings games this tournament there, right? Late swing there from Corbin McKinley. I think he He's real happy with himself. I think he realised a little bit too late that that was the curveball. It was going to be dropping into the zone. Tried to fight it off. Couldn't do it. Just warn you here. Things could get a bit rowdy in the commentary box as Alex Kovic steps to the plate. He's glorious. Bruce Bolt gloves that he bought himself. Lifts that one, there, right like centre. Caught out, centre fielder. Got a piece, got a piece on that ball, but not quite where he wanted it to be. Early excitement there for Mike Kovic. Turned to disappointment as the centre fielder came underneath it and took the catch easily. Two down now. All you can ask of a player is to be putting a bat to ball, making contact there, Roy. Um, Unfortunately, that's baseball where they have players out there to catch those things, mate. Absolutely. And pitcher's got seven players behind him. He needs to rely on every single one of them. That pitch up. Nerves will be starting to come over this New Zealand team. 73 mile an hour fastball. That Again, last one. New Zealand will be really up wanting in the to... Zone. Put a few more runs on him here, Roy. Down to our last out, but nothing's impossible here. Nice cut by TJ Amosa. Big rip from TJ. Commented a few times on the power that this young man possesses. It'd be nice to see it here. Strong line up behind him too. Way, way up in the zone. Two and one count here. Are we looking for his pitch here? That was it. That was and it. That is smoke out. Right field, there's no way that guy's getting that ball. He's going to get at least a stand-up triple again. I believe that's the third stand-up triple he's had this tournament there, Roy. Brilliant piece of work there by TJ Amosa. Well, we commented on it earlier. That right field has been playing short all day. He didn't adjust, even though the power of TJ was at the plate. Drove it over his head. Brilliant piece of work there by TJ Amosa. Right field and now right back on the fence. <laughs> Looks like he's going to adjust from that. And potentially that opens up an opportunity for Liam Hay here. Professional hitter. Liam Hay will certainly be wanting to bring TJ in here. Put another notch on the scoreboard. And he, he also smacks goes right ones field. out. Right field as well. Foul ball. Bats are starting to fire here for New Zealand. Indeed. 
We've seen at the last four batters, we've seen three hits. Great to see these uh, last two hitters, TJ and Liam, both sit back on the ball and look to go right field. It's a smart idea if you can get it out there, Roy. It uh, seems to be the place to hit right now. Right field is adjusting himself all over the place. He doesn't know where to go. He's worried. Low pitch there for Liam Hay. Pitcher also doesn't know where to go. He doesn't want to go near the zone again. He's had a couple of balls crunched. That ball from TJ Amosa. And this lineup isn't going to let up. Smash down the line. Liam can get on. This this lineup is not going to let up. We've got Messiah Tuhoro up next. Of course, this is all with two outs. Third baseman. Holding TJ on, that opens up a gap for Liam. 5 6 hole. Another Next high pitch, pitch there. <laughs> Liam just stares down the pitcher. <laughs> I get the feeling he might have just been saying to him, Go ahead, throw inside to me. He'll pull the hands in and rip one down the line. Left fielder. Playing very wide, a ball down the line, and with Liam's speed, anything could happen. Wild pitch there. Catch is doing a great job. Trisnati, we've seen this young man just really perform this tournament. Umpire Mike there just showing off his arm. There's a reason why the umpires warm up with throwing in the outfield. Last pitch at 67 mile an hour. Wild pitch though. Three balls, one strike. Liam will want one that he can do some damage with here. I got a feeling he might be looking to pull it down that left field line. Another good slot would be down third baseline here, right, Roy? Takes a strike there for the full count now. That is uh, exactly what I'm talking about. Left field line. Mike just struggling a little. It's my deaf ear, Roy. Apparently uh, on Thursdays, as well as not teaching maths, they also didn't teach left and right. Maybe uh, Mike should have gone to school twice a week. I have seen all my school reports. <laughs> it was disruptive in class <laughs> and never listens. Well, Liam fouls that one off. I'm not at all surprised by that report card, Mike. <laughs> I must admit, I had perfect attendance though. My parents, even when I was sick, made sure I went to school. <laughs> perfect attendance every single Thursday. <laughs> uh, what are all those warm up throws over there for? You can't get any Josh. Hey, you would know about Spikey in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, Liam! Hey, you, Liam! Great walk there by Liam. Runners on the corner for New Zealand now with Tuhoro up to bat. You might have just caught a little bit there of the banter between the New Zealand pitching coach, Connor Perry. Just really giving it to the head umpire, Josh here. Josh fires straight back. No mercy, these guys. I don't know, he's opening now. What's well, 11.30? Runners on first and third. Well, I'm not. Liam, possibly going to be right. put into action. So here, Mike Kovic in the background, trying to organise what's happening at the shop. Like I said before, the most reliable of the Kovic's, Jesse, he's there. That's all you need. Messiah, he'll stay patient here. Certainly reliable, on time, not sure. Messiah, if he can drive one, We'll certainly see TJ coming in from third, but it wouldn't surprise me at all to see Liam Wheels, hey? Get on his bike. So I swing through that one. Here the left fielder imploring his pitcher, come on, finish this off. Indonesia can get out of trouble in this innings, it'll be a real spur on for them. Liam in motion. Easily stolen to second. I'm surprised it took him so long to go, he's got such speed. Liam wheels hay. 
now in scoring position. Base hit from Messiah. Could give New Zealand back that three run cushion. Catcher Tristani, number 34. <laughs> one of the superstars of this Indonesian team. Just adjust his gear. He knows he can't afford anything to go wrong here. We really wanted to get back to ball here. And that's another ball. Three balls, one strike. Count in favour of Basai here. No doubt, green light. If he gets a pitch to hit, he'll be swinging hard. I'm sure Masai could absolutely crush one of those burgers there, Roy. This is an opportunity for us to see a hit that's worthy of a bat flip. Well, that's Low pitch, he's taken down, down to first base. Hugo Harvey up to bat now. Hugo getting support here from Yama Sakurai, his teammate, Bayside. See Timmy Harvey racing across to support his brother in this key situation. Just about broke the crocs there, how quickly he got over here. Yeah, he made a fundamental error. He hadn't switched into sport mode before running. Thought that was a te Texas Rangers uh, giblet there, but I think it's his name. Don't like to see that, somebody running in their crocs without switching into sport mode. That's how <laughs> injuries can happen. Sport mode. Critical. Yeah, they absolutely need to flip those thongs over the back so they stay on the feet. And it looks like we've got a situation here of a re-entry for the starting pitcher. Of course, as we commented the other day, a pitcher can be removed from the mound if he stays in the game. He can return once. I believe he had reached, I think, 50, 51 pitches maybe. So... They're going to be looking for him to finish out this game. He's coming on here in a key situation. Base is loaded. Hugo Harvey at the plate. Just so you can bring my keys back. I believe. Hugo's been taking some batting tips from his dad, Paul Harvey, one of the best batters in the divisional competition here in Auckland. Known for just ripping balls into the gap in the outfield. That's what Hugo's going to be looking to do here. Put one into the gap. We could see all runners score. One of the reasons we'd be looking forward to that is Hugo's known for his celebrations when he reaches base. We're going to see something spectacular if he does something here. I'd love to see the NM sim symbol coming from him if he uh, makes bag there. Oh, I think you're just calling for too much now, Mike. So here you go, just getting the signal. Couple you, more pitches. Hugo's eaten at the shop before. He knows. He knows how good. He'll be wanting one of those burgers. Interesting to see. Now this pitcher readjust, coming back onto the mound. See coach Tidia Thompson heading down to third base. He's hoping he's going to get an opportunity to wave in some runners. Hugo's just the man to give him that opportunity. Strides into the box. Just a little correction there. John McCoy, production manager, just saying 55 pitches, not 51. I missed the last batter that he faced. Rookie mistake, you wouldn't see that from the man, the myth, the legend, Samuel Lever. Hugo steps in. Harvey here, he's going to be wanting to put it out there. Two outs, bases loaded, what an opportunity. Well high there for Hugo. Ball one. Yeah. 
Timmy Harvey, I think, has just put out the offer to switch places with Hugo. Timmy reckons he could drive it in here. Unfortunately, he's not eligible. It's going to be up to Hugo. Steps and throws to third. And he's got him. That was a very hard call there, I believe. Hard to see here from here, Roy, but that Apolo looked very safe to me. Apologies there for the language from Mike Kovic. A little bit too invested in this game, but boy. I have a feeling that we saw something similar in um, our grand final for the We're just going to see Renegades. Coach Tidia Thompson walking off here. Real frustration on the face. Hugo Harvey. Absolutely By devastated. Devastated Hugo Harvey that he didn't get an opportunity to drive in the runs. And then Very hard to tell here as TJ Mosa looked to slide back in whether or not he managed to get his hand all the way back to the bag. I'm assuming that's what it was called out for. Appeared as though the hand went down before the tag, but if the hand came up short. Obviously, that would be an out. Regardless, as Mike mentioned earlier, you won't you won't change the mind of an umpire on that. We're going to go to the bottom of the six now. New Zealand, the smallest lead, six five. Okay, I'll be looking to shut these guys down pretty quickly here. Certainly won't want to be bringing any, any runs in here. We don't need any more games where lead the game. Not sure if this game uh, started bang on time, but we're now 11.40 local time would indicate that this game has been going for over two and a half hours. This will be the first time ever Mike Kovic is late for work. But that's because of the greater good of baseball. Mike might not even turn up today. Roy's indicating here to me that he needs me to be there later on when he stops in on the way home for a nice, juicy, delicious burger. <laughs> Strike one there for Nico. It's almost turning into just a straight advertising opportunity for Mike. I'd like to say you, you started all of that the other day, Roy, and I, I've just rolled with just, it. I just went to go with just a couple of, uh, a couple of little plugs for your shop. We're going to focus however on the baseball is Nico Waru, TK. A lot of pressure on him here. New Zealand clinging to a one run lead. Great pitch there by Nico. K. Straight, Straight to down TJ. To TJ with Look that at that bullet from third. That's what I was saying about him the other play there, Roy. If he had a glove that ball, I think all day that arm gets the ball there. And he does have a strong arm, this boy. And he'll be frustrated at the moment, having been picked off at third base. Got to take a little bit of it out there. On the, on the batter. Bang. See Tris Nardi here, number 34. Left hand batter in the box here. Been a top player. And that's a strike there. See Alex Kovic very disappointed with himself. Why do we sort it? Certainly putting them in the zone here. Hits a chest a couple of times, indicates to the pitcher. That's on me. Straight back into it. No runners on, says. One. Is it? One ball, one strike. 
lead off batter out. That was critical for New Zealand. Swing down to first. win. Messiah takes it. Takes the out. You see Messiah there after that earlier error on a similar ball. This time, gets right in behind it. Even if he hadn't got the glove to it, he was just going to body that up. Seen a, seen a nice uh, positive vibe here from the New Zealand boys today. It's so good to see there, Roy. They're all smiles on their faces, pep in the step. Yeah, it's a lot easier to enjoy a game when you're ahead. And ahead is how they'll want to stay, but we've seen it. off back behind the home plate there. We've seen it time and again from this Indonesian team. They just keep on fighting back. New Zealand experienced it in their round robin game. This is only the sixth inning. We're going to see an opportunity for your brother. Hugo Harvey, get back Plays out there. Plays it down to Amosa again. He picks it. Another. Oh, we have a drop ball at one. The boy has made bag. Grabbing his arm. Is there a slight collision there, Roy? Well, I was focused on uh, what had happened now there for, for Messiah, I think. Now, has that made Messiah actually miss the ball there, or, or is it... No, not at all. So what you see is that throw was high, and Messiah caught in between jumping for the ball or holding the base, and he sort of got caught in between. He thought he'd got high enough to glove that. Actually looked at his glove afterwards. No, Messiah. No, the ball is not in that glove. Be a disappointing situation for both players there. TJ will be disappointed with that throw, but Messiah. We have a runner in the change here. Messiah will feel like he should have taken that. So indeed, this is the special pinch runner or courtesy runner. Of course, you're allowed a couple of these in the course of the game. and. Great pitch there by Waru. Indonesia, of course, will see an opportunity here. That that runner on first base, in many ways gifted to them, represents the tying run. Going to be watching the runner. He's going to go here, I believe. Great pitch again by TK. He's putting that in the spot there, Roy. It's number eight hitter, though. Sompatan. He has been electric. For Very Indonesia. Athletic build here on this boy. He is the heart and soul of the team. Runner goes. That is a strike out there. That is putting the side away. New Zealand very happy about that. TK doing the job. So we're going to go into. The seventh and final innings. Everything to play for. New Zealand up. 6-5. Indonesia with a few interchanges here. We'll see if we can get Timmy Harvey just to join us. Timmy? So what are, what are, what are we likely to see from Hugo here? Oh, oh, confidence from his brother here. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't mean that. Probably a walk. Probably a walk. There you go. So, Timmy understands the game situation. New Zealand needing to get leadoff hitter on. He backs Hugo to get himself a walk. Not sure his brother's going to be too happy when he watches this replay and hears the comments, though. So if Could he, be in a little bit of trouble here. If he gets a pitch to hit, what's... What's his uh, hitting tendencies, Timmy? Where does Hugo like to put the ball? See the third baseline? Yeah. Over the third baseman's head? Down there. Just over the third baseman's head, down the left field line. That's what Timmy's picking. I think that if Hugo can do that, we're going to see a stand-up double. That left fielder, that left fielder playing wild. Of course, we would like to see that celebration. Yeah, OK. Sweet. Did you just say that the Hugo known for his big celebrations. And he gets to do it a lot. He is a top player here. So we'll see this number nine back on the mound. 
re-entered into the pitching mound and great awareness picking off TJ Moser at third to end that threat in the last innings with Hugo Harvey at the plate opportunity to drive in some runs but no now instead Hugo comes up leading off the seventh innings To me, he might have joked about how Hugo likely to ground out, but he's up on the fence supporting his brother. We love to see that pick come true of a ball into left field. The patented Hugo Harvey celebration. Swings at the first one. His brother's looking on with anticipation here. Hoping, hoping he's called it right here. Leaves that outside. Great eye there by Hugo. I must admit, I did like Timmy's call. A lead-off walk could be the way to go here. Hugo, very patient, capable of fouling pitches off. No, he didn't. Did he go? No. The umpire says no, he didn't, and that's an indication of the strength that this young man has. Look to swing so strong. Managed to hold that bat. Did Just not break the plane. 59 mile. There's that curveball. There's a nice cut there by Harvey. The curveball has been nasty. Whereas that fastball up at 68. Of course, his earlier stint on the mound, he was low 70s. Could we want him to put that pitch count on the pitcher here too? Pressure now on Hugo. Two strikes on him. Oh, and that's foul, foul tip. Into the glove. Disappointment there from Hugo. He sat back nicely on that curve ball, but just a little bit too much movement. Foul tip. Catcher held onto it. Micah Hargrave. I think, in many respects, I think we can actually trace the success of this New Zealand team in this game. Back to that at bat that Micah had earlier. 11 pitches. Before walking. Micah a little surprised there. Strike one. Yeah, he felt it might have been on that outside, off the outside corner. And Yumpai said no, no, it was on the outside corner. Ripping swing there by Micah. Be two strikes on him now. Two strikes straight away. We see the Korean team there in centre field. Look like they're getting ready to go to the batting cages here. Of course, the field house. Great supporters of Auckland baseball there in the field house. Across the road here from the Howick Pickeringa Baseball Club. Head down there, you're likely to see Pinky, maybe Duncan. They'll help you out. Great advice if whether you're buying baseball gear or looking to improve your game. Micah now. And oh. taken out with a third strike there. Looking. Let's see the chainsaw just ripped out by Mike. Micah disappointed. We've got two outs here. Good. Peter Lee up to bat here. He'll be looking to do some damage like he has in the last at bat there of course we saw that earlier on peter just ripping that double all the way to the fence that scored micah this time he comes up no one on it's good to see the central blue helmet on for peter there indeed peter yee one of the top players the junior grades at central city baseball club Takes a strike there. Well, interesting there. If he'd have squared to bunt, just having a look at what the field was going to do. And when the third baseman stayed off, seen Peter just drop a bunt down the third baseline and reach first easily. But well, hi there. On that occasion, he chose to pull back and looked at a fastball down the middle. 
Bucks now is in a situation. Two balls, one strike. I wouldn't be entirely surprised if that third base were not moving, if he looked for that bunt opportunity again. Just swung there. Very nice curveball. We saw that earlier in the game. 2-2 two, two count. Two outs in this innings. <laughs> and he blows a fastball past him. Peter strikes out and that'll be it for New Zealand. So this is going to be a very tense bottom of the seventh here. New Zealand up. Six runs to five in this third place match. New Zealand definitely would have liked a bit more of a cushion than that. Not to be, we see there, the Indonesian team clustered together knowing this is their last chance. Also knowing that they're going to have an opportunity to walk this game off in the bottom of the seventh. Two runs and they can walk away in third place from this tournament. Certainly don't want to see extra innings today there, Roy. Indonesia, an opportunity for a second time in this tournament to break the hearts of this New Zealand team. I don't think they need any more of that there, Roy. You see, last warm up. TK wearing the number eight. He'll be looking to channel some of the great number eights for the All Blacks. Someone look at Buck Shelford. <coughs> of course, the sport that New Zealand is more famously known for. But on this occasion, it's on the baseball diamond. There's a strike one there for uh, Nico. Nick, Nico. Nice to hear Mike Kovic working on his pronunciation. And that's in the gap. It's a single for Dharma. TJ Amosa laying out. But that ball was always going through the 5-6 hole. This is where New Zealand are going to have to want to stay composed. Get these out. And what we've got now, of course, Indonesia have got the tying run on base. I wouldn't be surprised to see him put that player in motion. Look to steal second. You haven't seen much from TK in the way of pickoff moves. Great pitch there again by Mikel. Get a look here, runner over on first base, taking his lead. Doesn't go. Go. That ball spiked in the dirt. It was off the mask of Alex Kovic. He just didn't quite see the ball. Where it had bounced to. Gave the runner an opportunity to advance. Also comms from the infield should have been giving him an indication where that ball was. I don't think it would have made a difference. That runner was always going to make it to second. And that is now the tying run. You see the batter there, looking to bunt. If they can advance this runner, if they can get him to third, then all it would take is a wild pitch or a pass ball. And this game would be tied. Looks to bunt again. Fouls it away. Good pitching by TK. 
Alex takes another ball from the umpire, throws it back to the pitcher. Real pressure situation here. What was that count there, Timmy? Is that 2-2 two -two count? Timmy Harvey doing work for us here in the production box. And there we go. That is a first out for the innings. That is a critical pitch there. New Zealand really wanted that one there. Changes the equation. Indonesia not able to advance the runner to third, but he is still in scoring position. Any base hit here, and I have no doubt that that Indonesian coach will be sending that runner home. New Zealand coaching crew animated up at the fence. Come on, TK. Come on, TK. That ball skips away. Wow. We see there the runner advancing to third. Alex Kovic just looking to pick that ball, not trying to block it. Skipped away, runner advanced to third. Infield now drawn in. Fascinating situation in this game. Of course, that runner down there on third base represents the tying runner. TK now, three ball count. Huge pressure in this game. Infield in. They're going to look to make the play at home. Creates a situation where hard hit ball can get through. Great pitch there by TK. Better looking at that. Are you sure, umpire? Yes, I'm sure. That was down the middle. Three balls, one strike. A coach. Third base. Barking his orders. Get it, get it, get it. Alex blocked that ball. Wow, didn't block it, sorry. Again, looking to pick it. Got enough of the glove to it. That is a walk. See here, pitching coach Connor Perry. Out to the mound. Connor Perry's been in this sort of a situation many times. Oh boy, I bet he wishes he could take the mound. Big left hander. <laughs> Ripped down a couple of 90 mile an hour fastballs and thanks for coming. That would be game over, but no. All he can do. That it wouldn't feel so good against uh, 15 and 16 year old boys there, Roy. It would feel just fine. He would be <laughs> fine with it. <laughs> Instead, all he can do is give some advice to his pitcher, Nikau Waru, TK. Runners first and third. I'm certain Indonesia. We'll put that runner in first into motion. You see the infield drawn in. They're basically handing him a stolen base and away he goes. Another strike there. The scary thing about that, of course, is now what that has done is put the go-ahead run into scoring position. New Zealand team, immense pressure on them. Outfield depth. And that is that through into left field. The tying run is scored. Still just one out. It was a tough call there. This New Zealand team. You look at that situation and go, 
What do you do? Are you prepared to give up the run? They weren't. They played the infield in. That created the situation where that hit got through. We're and in the Central City connection here, so hopefully they know each other and how they work together. Well, I hope the coaches have been looking at the batters here because, of course, with one out and a runner on third, you need to play your outfield at a depth where a fly ball to the outfield and they've got an opportunity to throw that runner out at home because a sacrifice fly would win the game for Indonesia. Assuming that this runner takes off from first, it'll be an interesting call. Do you just go an intentional walk? Open up a force play at any base? Of course, at the moment, ground ball, that runner coming home from third, it would be a tag play. Meaning that the catcher, Alex Kovic, would have to take the ball and tag that runner before he gets to the base. If you walk the bases loaded, then you set up a force, in which case all he has to do is step on home plate and the batter is out, or the runner is out. And this is all the stuff going through the head of these New Zealand coaches. And they can't believe what is happening out here. Situation of that leadoff runner getting on and then a couple of balls skipping away from the catcher, letting them advance. Ultimately, that then led to the infield having to be drawn in. The infield was drawn in, the ground ball gets through. And now, of course, the pitching change and it's Danish. Coming to the mound <coughs> with the scores tied and the winning run on third. New Zealand will be wanting to take this to the extra inning now. What do you think about this situation for a pitcher, Mike? Is he relish this situation or is he going to his coach? What the heck have you done to me, coach? Well, I think Dinesh has enough confidence behind himself that he should be composed on the mound here. And we've got number 77 at the plate. Probably feel more comfortable if it was the 77 of Samuel Eva, but it's not. It's the Indonesian 77, and he's got a good bat, this kid. Dinesh. The runner will go from first. Sure does. There's a strike from Dinesh. What a situation we have here. Only one out. Really, everything is in favour of Indonesia now. Oh, great Two in pitching. A row. That's beautiful work there by Danish. You said it here, Mike. Danish, the confidence to get out there and go, this is what I live for. Game on the line. Put me in, coach. He's had that, that feeling before Korea last year. He um, had some great outings on the mound there. Oh, and that ball's lifted to right field. Right field are going back. It'll go and over him. There, and this is game. We see. It's walk off. We see Indonesia. the winning run come home. Unbelievable scenes here as Indonesia walk it off on a two strike count. Looks like they feel like they've won the tournament though here. I can't say I blame them. Mike Kovic out. Mike Kovic cannot handle any more of this. He is gone. My gosh, Indonesia. It's not that I can't handle it. It's that I've got places to be, Roy, not like some people. John McKay. McKay. Oh, here he goes again. McCow. He's, he's what rattled. Is what is it? <laughs> and that'll be our final score here. Indonesia, what a team. They've just battled every game of the tournament. You see here the players shaking hands. Great spirit here. Real tough situation for New Zealand and really does tell the story of this tournament. Just could not put the nail in the coffin. And with that, Indonesia will take third place here 
at the Senior League Asia Pacific and Middle East Qualifying Tournament. We'll be signing off from this and we'll be seeing you at 2 p.m. for the final Korea versus Guam. Thanks for listening and tune in for the final.